Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Health Station. I'm Coach Ramirez, and today's event is Touchdown Toss, boys and girls. So let's go ahead and get started. But before, let me go ahead and give thanks to the Chula Vista Elementary School District for their support in what we do here, as well as the Chula Vista Elite Athlete Training Center, which is where the Health Station is situated at. All right. So first, I want to go through some of the things we're going to be doing today. The first thing is going to be learn how athletes throw and the different ways of throwing in, in uh, sports. Learn the mechanics of a softball pitch. So we'll be highlighting the softball pitcher. Learn about a sports medicine physician and how they help athletes when they're injured. Practice the cues of an underhand throw because that's what we're going to be using. The underhand throws we're going to be what we're going to be using in our game. We're going to build a beanbag toss game board, as you see in the picture right there. And we're going to play touchdown toss. And I'm calling it touchdown toss, boys and girls, because, of course, this weekend we've got the Super Bowl. And so we're going to theme the game after that. And then finally, for the fan favorite, play Kahoot. Yeah, all right. So let's go ahead and get started, boys and girls, with no further ado. All right. The throwing athlete. So. There's three different ways that we throw in sports, boys and girls. Uh, we throw underhand, okay? we throw sidearm, and then we throw overhand. And so some of those pictures you see right there illustrate that. So in the Olympics, you have the shot put, which kind of mimics the overhand throw. You have the javelin, okay, that throws overhand. And then you have the discus that throws sidearm, so to speak, here on the side. All right, and then of course in football, which we'll be watching this weekend, the quarterback will throw overhand. Then you have the pitcher, of course. For baseball, they throw overhand, and the highlighted athlete is going to the softball player, the softball pitcher throws underhand uh, to deliver that pitch. And then of course we have bowling, which is underhand. And then curious as it is, in baseball we mostly throw overhand, but the two pictures over on the left that you see is an underhand throw to somebody to make a play uh, when you're really close. You don't want to throw overhand when you're really, really close. So the underhand throw is really important uh, during the baseball game. All right. So the highlighted, uh, the highlighted athlete today is going to be the softball pitcher because of that underhand throw. And we have Jenny Finch, who who was who is a popular softball player from uh, from a little time ago who played in the Olympics, um, in a couple Olympics actually, and helped the USA to gain some medals. Um, and so we're gonna highlight her and her pitching mechanics. But first let's go over some of those mechanics. As you can see in the diagram above, the, me the mechanics are separated into phases and they're using numbers on a clock to kind of show where the arm's going. So in phase one, as you can see, the pitcher faces the target, okay? And then the momentum starts with bringing that arm back. All right, so as in phase one, you bring that arm back and you start your momentum forward. Phase two, you begin to take that step with the opposite foot, okay? So that step begins, the arm starts to move. As it shows in phase three and four, the arm moves from back here to six o'clock, then three o'clock. And as the foot steps down, you get to 12 o'clock here, now you have that long stride as a softball pitcher to get the power from your lower body to swing that arm and get that ball home as fast as possible with the follow through. So with those phases, let's go ahead and watch Jenny Finch in a slow motion go through those mechanics. So as you can see, the, the softball pitch, boys and girls, can go all the way up to about 70, 75 miles per hour, which is very, very hard and um, to hit and, and see probably. And um, 
and it's a very short distance, so it's a very difficult feat to do. So as we know in sports and athletes, boys and girls, there's injuries. And so we're going to go into, we're going to dive into the, the career of a sports medicine physician. So first of all, these are some areas the sports medicine physician may work on, okay, either for surgery because it's been injured, uh, maybe uh, prescribe a therapy that they can do to strengthen it, or even medicine just to bring down the swelling and, and just and, and assure the athlete that, it, that the injury is not so bad. But they work on the shoulder, the elbow, the wrists, the hips, the knees, and the ankles. And those are specific areas because those are joints. And in those joints, boys and girls, you have muscles, you have muscles, you have um, uh, ligaments, and you have tendons. And those are the areas, and those are the parts of the, of the joints, boys and girls, that help the athlete do the rotation, either of the arm or the ankles or the bend the knees and things like that. So it's very important in sports. And you have the sports medicine physicians to try to take care of that when they are injured. So let's go ahead and look into the life of a sports medicine physician uh, in this next slide. Whoops. Ah, what's going on here? Hold on one second. <laughs> Looks like my slides are getting together. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, uh, boys and girls. For whatever reason, my slide is failing for the video. Hmm. Let me try one more time. Oh, there it is. All right, thank goodness. Technology has uh, thrown me a curveball, no pun intended, and I think I hit it. All right, so here is the day in the life of a sports medicine physician, the highlighted career. This is Dr. Lee Kaplan, director the at the University of Sports Medicine Institute. Oops, it's not playing. One second, there we go. I think in the end what people come to me for is that they feel that I have their best interests in mind. Okay, yeah. She says she has a torn meniscus and a torn hamstring. Most of the time when people need us, we're, we're helping them, so I, I get a lot of value out of that and hopefully add value to the patients. You know, this is not a job for people um, who don't enjoy it. You know, I'm very fortunate. I love what I do. Working on your technique and working on your craft is, is critical. I was probably here about three months and I got a call whether you know I'd be interested in uh, helping take care of them tomorrow. And so this is my 11th year. Major League Baseball players play 162 games a year. Our, our UM baseball team will play 65 plus a year. The more that you watch these Major League players, the more you realize the great ones do it through routine and practice. I think if you want to be elite at any profession, you have to be willing to put in the time and the effort. So what I really love is seeing people, whether it's a police officer, a fireman, a physician, you know, a professional football player, a coach, all of whom I saw this morning when you were with me in clinic, I were a professional baseball player with the Marlins, get back to play. That's that's really what I love. All right. Sorry, boys and girls, my little clicker is not working right now. So I'm going to have to put that down aside. I apologize. So. As you can see, the sports medicine physician uh, not only takes care of athletes, but other, uh, other careers as well, or other professions, uh, but primarily athletes. There's two reasons why athletes go and see sports medicine physicians quite a bit. Uh, one of them is overuse. So overuse is basically using your arm way too much without giving it rest, and that will cause injury. 
So making sure you take care of your arm by not using it too much is key to your longevity in throwing. The other one is poor pitching mechanics. If you're a pitcher, uh, when you're little, okay, you can you throw you can throw quite a bit and maybe not get injured. But as you get older and you start to throw harder, mechanics become a real important part of what it is that you have to do uh, in order to in order for your arm to stay healthy. So get a coach uh, at an earlier a at an earlier time than you think. And if you really like to do this and learn how to learn the pitching mechanics so that it takes you a little bit longer without injury. Now, <clears throat> what I want to ask you to put in the Q&A right now is I want you to think about, um, I want you to tell us about maybe an experience of a, of a sport you were playing and then you got injured. Um, or if that hasn't happened to you, maybe think of a, uh, of a, somebody you know or maybe a favorite athlete that you have that you know has gotten injured in a game um, or because of their sport and has to have had to have had to be out of the game for a while because of that injury. Go ahead and share with us in that Q and A, um, and uh, and we'll 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 hear about that later. All right, um, let's go ahead. All right, so we've been I've been talking quite a bit, uh, so I wanted to give us a chance to stand up and move around. So we're, I'm going to lead you in a dynamic stretch. You know me, I got to get some exercise in or uh, some kind of warm up. So we're going to do a dynamic stretch, boys and girls. And what that's going to entail is stretching while we're moving and getting our bodies warm. So move back away from your chair, give yourself a little space. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring our knee up to our chest. And then we're going to bring it down and then back and then do a lunge. OK. And we're going to take uh, the other side and do the same thing and do a lunge. So we're stretching and moving at the same time. Ready? We're going to do about five of these and see how we feel. Ready? One for both sides. That's. Here we go. The other side for one. Two. Really feel that stretch, boys and girls. You're going to get that in your back. That's three. You're going to feel it in your hamstrings and your quadriceps. That's four. As you can see, it takes balance, right? That's five. Two more. Six. Seven. Actually, two more here. Finish up with eight. And eight. Whoo. All right. Very good. You should feel your legs nice and stretched. Feel your body kind of warm. Move those arms around a little bit. There you go. All right. So here's what we're going to do next. What we're going to do is we're going to go over the underhand toss, OK? So we're going to take what we learned from the softball pitching mechanics and we're going to adapt them to cues that we're going to be able to use for our game, our touchdown toss, OK? So I'm going to go over to stand, stand sideways this way. We're going to go over number one, which is feet apart or uh, put your feet together and face your target. So if my target's over there, I'm going to face it. I'm not going to be side to target. I'm going to face my target, OK? The next thing you're going to do is you're going to swing your arm back, kind of like the pitcher did. Swing your arm back, and then you're going to step with opposition by moving your momentum going forward. Now, opposition means the, you're going to step with the foot that is opposite to the ball, where, where you, uh, the hand that has the ball that's going to throw. OK, so swing back, step with opposition, swing forward, and release out in front for number five, OK? So let me go over it one more time. Face your target, 
swing your arm back, step with opposition with momentum going forward. Okay, when you land, you're gonna go, you're gonna take that swing arm forward underhand to six o'clock and three o'clock. And when you release, release at three o'clock. This is gonna help you guide the beanbag into the hole in the uh, touchdown toss board, okay? So let me do it in fast motion now. Be athletic, bend the knees. I'm sure you've heard that before. Arm back, step with opposition, release at three o'clock and hold it right there, okay? So those are gonna be the things you wanna think about as you are uh, tossing the bean bag or the sock for that matter, which we're gonna look at the materials, the sock uh, for the game that we're going to play. All right, so the materials needed for our game today. Of course, we're gonna need a box to make the board, okay? You're gonna need two pairs of socks because I want you to have four tries. I'm gonna show you how to fold each sock right now. You're gonna need scissors, the pen or, or uh, the pen or a marker to mark your lines, a ruler, a string to attach to your pin and make the circle. Then you're gonna use, then you're, we're gonna need tape to tape the box um, and make it firm. And you can use any of those three uh, right there, okay? Now, if you need to pause to go get materials right now because you don't have them, know that you can pause and when you gather your materials, come back and you can get back to where you left from. All right, so let's look at a sock real quick and learn how to fold it. So this is the nice part of the sock, which is the outside. What I first want you to do is you pull the inside out so that when the sock is done being folded, the nice part is on the outside. I'm going to call this the ugly part, okay? The inside part. So you're going to take the foot section, you're going to fold it in half just like this. Then you're going to fold it up the leg a couple times, depending on how tall your sock is, but you're going to fold it until it becomes until it it uh, uh it becomes kind of flat and folded with the entrance to the sock up on top. You're going to take one side one flap of the sock where it enters and then you're going to fold it in side out like this and fold it over the whole rest of the sock and now you have the shape of a bean bag which is kind of flat okay and that's going to be important because you don't want it to roll you want it to stick when it hits the board and so go ahead when you have a chance fold the socks into this fold the socks this way so that you can use it all right now let's go ahead and get to the build all right so i'm going to pull my table here into the shot all right i think that should be pretty good now we're going to build two boxes i'm going to build two boxes for you because the measurements are going to depend on whether you have a big box or a small box all right so I have a big box, which you can see as an example, is about 28 inches by 17 inches, okay? If you have a small box, just hold on, we're gonna be doing that box as well. So the first thing I wanna do is make sure the box is firm. So I'm gonna take my tape and I'm gonna close it up so it's nice and firm. I'm gonna put one right down the middle to make sure that my, tape, my, my uh, opening in my box is nice and closed. I'm even going to add another piece right here to make it nice and firm because this is going to be where the sock is going to bounce from. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you, I already asked you one question. I'm going to ask you another one that you can maybe put into the Q&A that I forgot to ask you earlier. Yes, it's my fault. But I think right now as you're watching or you're building, maybe you have a chance to put in an answer for it, is do you play a sport that requires throwing? And if you do play that sport, how, um, how do you throw in that sport? Overhand, sidearm, or underhand? Okay. All right, so here is the closed box. Now it's time to measure it. 
Okay, what I'm going to do is, as you can see the dimensions on the screen, this box is going to be 10 inches tall. And this is going to be an important part. 10 inches tall is going to be the tall part. So I'm going to take my marker, and I have a big marker here, and I'm going to measure those 10, the 10 inches for this big side. Okay, and then I'm going to take it over and make another line on the other side so I don't have to measure that side because you're going to need a spot over there too. You're going to do the same over on this side. And I'm going to make a line over here too. Because you're going to connect those dots, right? After measuring, you got to do something with those measurements. So if this is the tall side, this then is going to be the short side. And the short side basically is half the tall side. So half a 10, not all of you answer at the same time, is five. That's correct. Okay, so I'm going to make my mark right there. And then again, make it on the other side. And one more time, make my mark over here for five. And then over on this side. So those are my marks, tall side, short side. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I have to connect these two to make my slope on my game. So I'm going to take my pen or marker in this case, and I'm going to take something straight. Now you can use your ruler and go a little bit at a time, okay? But uh, if you have something as uh, long, uh, if you need, again, if you need to pause and go find something long to use to, to, to write, draw your line, please do so. So I'm going to connect these two marks I made. Try to hold my stick nice and steady. There's one side. Or the long side. Here is again. Okay, there's my line there. And then of course, the back side needs to be measured, needs to be lined up as well. Whoops. Again, make sure if it's a round stick you're using like me, you hold it nice and steady. All right, there's that side, I'm gonna fold it over. Here's the short side. There. Hold on one second, I was a little off. All right. So there's my lines. Okay. You can see tall side, whoops, <laughs> short side. Good. Trying to get too fancy there. Now it's time to cut. So this is going to be a little difficult for maybe the smaller uh, students, the younger students. Um, so you might want to get an adult to try to help you, but try it. See what happens. So I'm going to make a hole with my scissors to get my, stop, my cut started, and I'm going to get going. Now, I found through practice that by going down the line and maybe lifting a little bit can help you out. So it's helping me out here. Another way would be to cut and peel back a part of the box. Try to stay on the line because you want both sides to be nice and even. It's going to make a mess, but hey, that's what building's all about, right? There we go. Hey, Coach, hey, Coach Ramirez. Ramirez. Yes. We have a, we have bunch, a bunch of answers, answers to that, to that question, question that you just threw out. Would now be a good be time a good to share time some of those? those? I would love to show to hear some answers. That would be awesome. Are you referring to the one about the sports they play and how they throw? Yes. Yes. Oh, perfect. Yes. 
So, so the first tell me you have is from. Excuse me. We have is right. And Riley said that uses throwing motion in softball. All right. We also had a whole bunch of people share. Uh, Jared, Layla, uh, Cole, and a few others that they play baseball or play baseball, and they use both the underhand and overhand toss. That's right. I think it probably, especially if you're playing second base or shortstop, something like that, right, Coach? That's right. Yes, definitely that sidearm comes into effect trying to throw, trying to get that double play, trying to get that ball out of your hand as quick as possible. We also have a, our friends at Olympic View, the second graders, shout out to them, saying that they use the uh, overhand throwing motion when they play basketball and football. Ah, there you go. Uh, Jeremy said the same thing as well about football. And then we have Kat, who mentions that when she plays soccer and does a throw-in, you throw the ball with both hands over your head. Ah, yes. Overhand. Over the overhead throw, you would call that one, huh? Right. Yeah, we, we have some uh, great ones out there. And uh, in a few minutes, we'll have some really good ones for you about the injury as well. Beautiful. Yeah, we'll get to those in a second. All right. So here you have the platform for the touchdown toss game. The last thing we have to do is we are going to make the hole here for the sock to go in. And so that's where. And, you know, if, if, if you're able to use something else to make the hole, measure the circle thing first. OK. Um, and uh, I'd see if you can use it to make that hole, uh, which needs to be, as you see on the picture, a seven inch diameter, which means from one side to the other needs to be seven inches. So I can't use this because this one's only four, three and a half inches. So it needs to be a lot bigger than this. So what I'm gonna use, and I ask you to have this, is attach a three and a half inch string to your tip of your pin, okay? And so what you're going to do is you're going to measure from the tall side down the middle of your box from the tall side, not the short side, the tall side. And you're going to make a mark at four inches. That mark is going to be where the top of the circle is. And go ahead, I'm going to mark this so you can see my big marker. So that's the tall side of my box and this is a four inch diff uh, it's four inches off of the top so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my pin which fell and i'm going to put the pin on that line like this okay and i'm going to hold the string down at the bottom. And so I'm going to demonstrate here how by holding the string and moving the pin, it's going to make a circle all the way around. Okay. Of course, it'd be easier if I can have it flat on the ground, but as you can, as you probably can't see, by holding the string in the middle and moving the pin, it's going to make that half circle. So I did it on this side. Now I'm going to do it on the other side. Hold the string in the middle. I'm sorry. Put the pin down on the line and then move the pin around. Okay. Just going to do it one more time. There you go. So now I've got my seven inch circle. I'm going to go ahead and mark this with my big pen. Okay, so that's the circle that I'm, I was able to make with this. So then I'm going to take my scissors, poke a hole in the middle so it's not so difficult, and start cutting around that circle. This is going to be the circle we will try to toss the beanbag or the socket.
again, if you're able to get help to cut this out, that's fine. That's great. All right. There we go right there. So this is my big box build for the uh, touchdown toss. I'll put this over here because we're going to be using it later. Now I'm going to build a small box. And so the small box, boys and girls, means that this tall side is going to be less than 10 inches. Let me go ahead and switch the screen to the other side, to the other slide. Okay, so there's a small box. So what you're going to do is you're going to measure the, your small box, which, which needs to be the tall side, okay, this area right here. If it's less than 10, which it is, this is only six, okay? If this is only six, like you see in the example, it's a, it's eight, the short side is going to be half of it, all right? So this one is six. I'm going to not cut it because it's less than 10. So I'm going to keep this six inches, okay? And I'm going to measure the short side. I'm going to measure the short side to half of it, which is not everybody all at once three inches. Very good. So there and there. And then I'm going to do the other side as well. Three inches because that is half of six. There and there. All right. Now this box is open, so I need to firm it up by putting some tape. And I'm going to put a couple layers there you go nice and firm so that when the sock lands on it it doesn't go into the box right all right, very good. So now that it's firm and I got my measurements, again, this is the tall side. I'm going to cut from the corner down to the short side. So let me go ahead and put my measurement broomstick there so I can make my line. All right, tall side, short side. from the corner of the box to my line. There it is. And then my front side. Mr. Bruder, can you, uh, uh, this would be a good time to probably give me some of the answers of maybe some injuries they've had or a sports athlete that they really really like to or follow that has in, that has uh, experienced an injury sure coach and actually i have one from earlier too about uh sports a, cer a certain sport and the different types of throwing can i share that too absolutely eric shared with us that he plays basketball and he uses both overhand and underhand in basketball so overhand with the shooting and the passing and underhand with passing and layups you wouldn't think in basketball, right? We also had uh, Zoe who shared about a game called uh, Beanie Ball, where they are trying to throw the, a beanbag in the basket. So kind of similar to, I think, what you're doing, but blending it with basketball, it sounds like. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Speaking of basketball, one of the uh, injury examples that was shared was about a student who was uh, at basketball practice, Eric, and rolled rolled his ankle and ha had to sit out for a little bit. Oh, yeah. That's one of the areas, yes, 
very prevalent of injury for athletes. Yes. Uh, matter of fact, uh, another student, Adrian, who plays football, shared the same thing about a time that they hurt their ankle playing football. There you go. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of jumping going on, like in basketball and football and even baseball for that matter. I can I can recall a couple times uh, jumping and coming down very, very badly on my ankle. Speaking of that, Avery, who does acrobatics, shared that uh, they broke their foot doing acrobatics. Oh. Do you know what? As I mentioned, there are people out there that for, the, for their living, as a career, for their life, in their lives, they are there to fix people that injure themselves playing sports. Now, isn't that great? <laughs> Yep, that sports medicine physician we talked about earlier, and I can share with you myself, I've been lucky enough to have a sports medicine physician help me recover from an injury. Absolutely. I, I do recall you telling me that story. Um, very nice. All right, so I have finished cutting the tall side and the short side of my box. Now I'm going to Take my string back up because it came off of my pin. I tape my string back on my pin here in order to make my circle for this small box build. Okay, and again, we are going to measure a couple inches down. Because this is a smaller box, I'm only gonna go two inches down on this one. Okay, and in the same way, we're going to take the pin, the ballpoint part of the pin, we're going to put it on the line, hold the string with a finger, and then make that circle. Now, I did want to, I did want to explain a little bit that you don't have to use a sock especially if you're using a smaller box than this. What you can do is fold a piece of paper into a small square, tape it, and just use the piece of paper in a square, fold it into a square as the bean bag to toss, especially if it's a small box like this. Now I can probably still use the socks for this one, but you are able to do that. All right, so as I cut this, I'm going to be able to get to the point to where I have my small box there you go all right so I'll put this one down over here you can see both of them all right so now that we have our build done, I'm going to move this chair, the table out of the way. So that we can demonstrate the game. Now, I'm going to go over the rules. So as you see on the screen, the rules are we need to stay behind a marker. OK, you need to stay behind a marker. And that's really important because it needs to be fair between you and the other person or just to make sure it's consistent, right? The second one is if you land on the board, it's like a, a field goal, three points. If you land in the hole, that's seven points, okay? Now you have four chances, which equals the four downs. So how many points can you score within those four downs is one game you can play. If you're playing by yourself, you can time yourself to see how many points you can get, or you can just compete against another player to get to a certain amount of points using the football points. Again, the theme of the Super Bowl, right? Very good. All, all, all of it, using the mechanics of throwing, right? The mechanics of an underhand toss. Oh, 
three points, right? There it is. I'm going to get seven. Come on. There it is, seven points. And we'll stop right there because I don't want to push my luck. Let's go ahead. It is now time for the Kahoot, boys and girls. So it is time for Kahoot and learn about some of the things that we talked about. Um, there's one question in there I didn't go over, but I want to see if you can maybe ask somebody who knows who knows this question that you might get help from. OK, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the Kahoot game. Go ahead and take the pin. And um, I think it's getting put into the chat right now so that you are able to. So that you are able to. Um, Put it in. Remember to go on a separate screen. And not closed out the tab. All right, let's see. Here it is. All right, you should be able to see the Kahoot game. All right, Mr. Bruder, has there been any other questions that have come up or comments about our topic today? Hey, Coach Ramirez. Yeah, we have some uh, other examples of, of students sharing the injuries that they might have experienced while playing sports, if I could share that with you. Awesome. We have one here from uh, Lucas who sh didn't share about his own experience, but it sounds like a baseball fan here about Justin Verlander and Tommy John surgery. Okay. And nice. then we also we also had uh, Charlie sharing about a time that they dancing and injuring and twisting the ankle while dancing. All right. And yeah. you know what, Coach? Before we read any more, I'm hearing some reports of some issues with our Kahoot pin. So oh. I'm going to ask if you could reset that pin for us. Okay. And Mr. Garcia and I will post that new pin. So apologize to all the viewers out there. We'll get another pin set up for you. Just give us a quick second. So while you do that, Coach, you just let us know when it's ready. We'll get that queued up. And it's okay. I'll share another example. That'd be awesome. All right. So uh, Kat has shared with us about a snowboarder that they were watching in the Olympics when they came down hard from a jump and they injured their arm. Oh, OK. So coach, thanks for getting that new pin up for us. You for have it? Viewers, yep, for our viewers, it's 394-4590. We'll throw that in the chat. Give you guys some time to log in. And I have another one to share with you from Zach about playing soccer. He uh, kind of kicked the ball weirdly and, and ended up breaking a toe and uh, kind of shared with us a funny story about using a lightsaber as a crutch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Star Wars fan nonetheless. Yeah, sure sounds like it. <laughs> and again, Very I want to... I want to thank our viewers for hanging out with us and, and, and uh, helping us get this Kahoot reset. I can see a whole bunch of them logging in there. Yes, I'm glad uh, I'm glad we caught that and were able to fix that up because uh, the Kahoot game is one of the things we are waiting for. Yeah, while, while we wait for some more to log in, we also had uh, Sarah share while she was uh, riding her bike. She uh, injured her ankle as well. Seems like the ankle injuries are uh, pretty prevalent. Very popular. Yeah, if I have yeah. to, if I had to think of an injury that I had uh, uh, as a sports, as, a, as an athlete, I think the ankle would be at the top of the list, <laughs> luckily. Yeah, we also had another one from Jordan who uh, played baseball and uh, was accidentally hit by the baseball. I know I've taken a few of those in the arm and the shoulder and the leg, being a lefty. 
<laughs> yes, absolutely. As a coach, throwing batting practice, I've had balls hit right back up the middle and hit me on the side of the side of my body. No fun. But I love what you said earlier. Injuries do happen and most we recover pretty quickly from, but another great career for kids to explore out there is that sports medicine physician who helps people get back from these injuries. Absolutely. All right. Looks like we're kind of slowing down. Do you want to get started? You read my mind. All right, let's go ahead and get started with the Kahoot, boys and girls. Touchdown toss. Three, two, one. All right, here we go. What sports competition will be played this weekend that I talked about, boys and girls? What sports competition will be played this weekend? Is it the, is it red? Uh, Triangle Stanley Cup? Is it Orange Circle Olympics? Is it Blue Diamond Super Bowl? Or is it Green Square World Series? What sports competition will be played this weekend? Red Triangle Stanley Cup Orange Circle Olympics? Blue Diamond Super Bowl? Green Square World Series? All right. Which one is, are we excited to do, to do the uh, touchdown toss for this weekend? Um, I think we, you have plans, Ms., uh, Mr. Bruder? I'm assuming I you do. I definitely plan on watching the game here at home. I can't, I don't, I'm not sure who I'm rooting for quite yet. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, moving on. Looks like we... Got blue as an answer. That is correct. The Super Bowl we're going to be watching. That's why we themed our game after the Super Bowl today. All right. Moving on to the next one. Awesome squid up there. Here we go. The next question. This game is actually called. So this is one I, I did not mention, boys and girls. So if you're able to, we have... Ask somebody. We have red triangle, toss it. Blue diamond, in the hole. Orange circle, corn hole. Green square, swish. Again, red triangle, toss it. This game is actually called, which one? Red triangle, toss it. Blue diamond, in the hole. Orange circle, cornhole, green square, swish. Which one do you think this game is actually called, like for real? Okay, I just named it Touchdown Toss because of the game and the football game this weekend, but which, which name is it actually called? All right, the correct Answer is cornhole. That's right. No, we got the most get the answer correct, Mr. Bruder. I'm happy about that. Oh, Amazon Raven takes the lead. Next question. What sport has a pitcher that throws underhand? What sport has a pitcher that throws underhand? Red, triangle, baseball, blue, diamond, golf, orange, circle, softball, Green square volleyball. Which sport has a pitcher that throws underhand? Red triangle baseball. Blue diamond golf. Orange circle softball. Green square volleyball. All right. Which one is it? Again, red triangle baseball. Orange circle softball. Blue diamond golf and green square volleyball. Answers coming in. Five seconds, put it in. All right, the correct answer is softball and most of you got it. Nice job, everybody. The next question, oh, who's taking the lead? Amazon Raven stays in the lead. Next question, which cue does not belong for the underhand throw. So which one does not belong for the underhand throw? Which cue? Jump after toss, red triangle, jump after toss, blue diamond, face the target, 
orange circle, step with opposition. Green square, swing throwing arm back. So which one does not belong as a cue? Red triangle, jump after toss. Blue diamond, face the target. Orange circle, step with opposition. Green square, swing throwing arm back. Which one does not belong in these cues? Which one did I not talk about as a cue? Oh, nice job, everybody. Looks like most of you were able to get that correct. All right. And Power Out takes the lead. Next and last question, boys and girls. What career helps athletes with injuries? What career helps athletes with injuries? Is it red triangle plumber, blue diamond teacher, orange circle accountant, green square sports medicine physician? Red, dime, red triangle plumber, blue diamond teacher, orange circle accountant, green square sports medicine physician. Which one helps athletes with injuries? Red triangle plumber, blue diamond teacher, orange circle accountant, green square sports medicine physician. All right. Eight seconds left. Let's see how many people got this correct. And 97, nice job for the majority of them. Good job. Touchdown toss podium. Let's see who ends up in third place. Amazon Raven, nice job. Second place, Power Elk. And coming from, the, from behind, who was it? Awesome Squid, nice job Awesome Squid, takes the podium in fourth. All right, very nice. Let me go ahead and switch back here. <clears throat> Let's see here. Okay, let me go ahead and share my screen again. All right, so. That is, that was our uh, Kahoot game, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed it. And I want to direct you again to the innovation uh, channel on YouTube, as well as our CVSDPE channel, which of course hosts our own CVSDPE teachers doing lessons in, the, in that channel. Um, and a reminder, that in two weeks, not next week, but in two weeks, on Friday, February 19th, we have, again, Miss Q, Mrs. Q doing fantastic fins for us. Fantastic fins. All right. And so remember, football weekend, uh, touchdown toss are going together with some good snacks, boys and girls. So enjoy. I'm glad you were here with me today. And um, I hope you get, uh, uh, I hope you have a fun time playing the game and watching the football this weekend. All right, thanks for being with me. I will see you next time.